hi there and welcome to this Lumion tutorial. In this video, we'll show you how to build compelling interior designs and scenes. And we'll show you how to take a leap towards photorealism using the ray tracing effect and give your clients a true sense of how the lights and materials play together in your design to create a true representation of the space. And be sure to open the reference model and follow along with the tutorial. Let's get stuck in. As we've mentioned in other tutorials, setting up your workspace will ensure that you can avoid redundant work and add in details where they're not necessary. Focus clearly on what you want to put in front of the client. Let's jump right into photo mode and adjust the position of the camera and focal length. This will capture all of the details we want to show and we'll also choose a specific aspect ratio. Anyone can tell that there's something missing here and we need to populate the model and there's no better place to start than with the Lumion library. We can navigate to the objects category and browse around for something interesting. Select the items that you want and place them into your scene. Of course, you can always replace an item with something else by selecting it and going to replace model. In Lumion, you can now save your selections in the group library for easy access and for use across multiple projects. To give you an example, let's select these objects, add them to a group, and then save the group by clicking this button. Try to find a good angle to ensure that you give your group a clear and recognizable thumbnail, as that'll help you to locate them much easier later on. From now on, no matter which project you open, you will always be able to go back to the group library, select your group and place it wherever you need. The Lumion library contains three main light types spotlights, omni lights and area lights. And each of them can be useful in different scenarios, but they're all extremely easy to work with. Now we can place a few spotlights here and adjust their brightness. In some situations, you may need to change the cone angle and this will affect how wide the area of effect is for the spotlight. So feel free to adjust it as needed. Consider these the most important settings, but they're not the only ones. Some other options allow you to enable and disable the light source, and if enabled, increase the radius of the light source. You can orient the spotlight direction, you can allow night activation, you can set the quality of the shadows, increase the shadow exclusion zone, and you can load an IES profile. Now we don't need an omni light in this tutorial, but I think we should highlight them. I want you to think of an omni light as a point that is emitting light in all directions. But apart from not needing a cone angle, it pretty much works the same as a spotlight. And lastly, for our recessed areas, line lights would make absolute sense here. So adding a few and setting them to a fairly low brightness will add some complexity to the space without adding clutter. Okay, now we're not even five minutes in and already we're getting some great results. So you can see how we've kept things simple so far. And for consistency, we should probably do the same for materials. So we're going to look at some of the library materials where we're mostly adjusting the colorization and the roughness. And this one is crucial in obtaining textures that you want to reach out and touch. Let's look at a few examples for the floor, the ceiling, the walls and cabinets. And just a few more minutes of work and that's what we call maximum efficiency. Now, we'll use the same trick as we did for the lighting and we'll imply the interior RT style. We may tweak it a little just to obtain the exact lighting effect that we want. Okay, let's get the sunlight sorted out in the real skies effect. And yep, um, some color correction should boost the atmosphere a little. Now, when you're using the ray tracing effect, there are a few rules that you should keep in mind. The less light you have, the more samples you're going to need to resolve the image. So for this case, I think 512 will be plenty. The bouncers are going to boost the interaction of light with objects. And as we have a fair amount of non-reflective surfaces here, we want those to harmoniously blend. So we're going to max this out. 
And for this use case, and to be honest, for any scenario where your room is well lit like this, I would set the denoiser on and put firefly reduction to zero. Time to render. Couple of minutes later and well, this is what I call spot on. Now as a bonus, let's take a minute to turn this into a night scene. We have all those lights on their own layer that we used earlier and it would be a pity to let them go to waste. So let's copy and paste this photo position with its effects. We'll check the sun effect and let's lower the sun to get that perfect blue hour. We'll choose the layer visibility effect and here we'll enable the lights and make them a little bit warmer. And we'll choose the RT effect and this time we'll increase the samples to 1024. And voila, we have this incredible night shot in no time at all. Once again, in under 10 minutes of work, we've been able to achieve an incredible result. Designing and rendering interiors can be fun and exciting. It doesn't get any better. And if you want to check out some more examples of just what's possible in Lumion, here's a few rolling across the screen. Now let's see what you can achieve. Keep practicing.